Okay, back out in the 6.8 liter garage. Got a new project today. Um, got some new materials. I picked up uh, some, they're like 12 and a half to 14 inch table saw blades. And I'm gonna make a clock today. Um, first I gotta get the shop set up, the shop area set up for uh, metal cutting and stuff. As you can see, there's some uh, furniture in here that my wife's been refinishing. So I'll get that moved out get the art droids set up and we'll cut out a clock but first I'm going to send you off with uh, laptop guy um, if you're getting tired of laptop guy or if there's a you know let me know in the comments um, I'll, t I'll tell him to keep it short and just show you basically how he drew this thing but um, anyway let me know if you're getting tired of him or if you want more of him or whatever but hopefully he'll he'll be less boring and keep it interesting but why don't you go off with him and I'll get this all set up and then when you get back we'll cut it out Okay, laptop guy here um, in Inkscape, and I'm going to do the clock face just to show you how, well, there's a little trick to it to make it really easy. So we need a guide for the blade, and the blades that I'm using are like 12 and a half to 14 inches. Um, I think the one I'm going to use today is 12 and a half, so we need a circle that's, I'm going to use a circle that's 11 inches height and width. So now we've got our 11 inch circle. The next thing we need is a line. So let's draw a line. The line needs to be more than 11 inches. Whoops. And we need it perfectly vertical. So let's click this node and see where it's at minus three something so I'll just make it minus three click this node make it minus three so now we have a perfectly vertical line let's see they didn't move did they three oh Three, three. All right, so now we have a vertical line. The line isn't part of the, the clock, neither is a circle for that matter, but what we want them for is to guide us in putting our numbers on the clock face. So now I'm gonna highlight both the circle and the line and center them vertically, or well, horizontally, and vertically. So next thing we need is our numbers. So bear with me, that create bunch of numbers. Alright, so now we've got our numbers and we're ready to start assembling our clock face. So we know 12 go, we want all our numbers just inside the circle, that's an 11 inch circle, and 12 goes at the top. So we line it up on our line, center it, and 6 goes at the bottom. Just inside the circle, center it as best as you can. I mean this doesn't really have to be perfect but if it was way off you would notice it. <coughs> so that, here's the tricky part. So we click our line twice so we get the rotate arrows. Click and hold the arrow. Click and hold alt and drag. So each jump is 15 degrees. So we need 30 degrees so I did two jumps. We need 30 degrees because 360 degrees divided by 12 gives you 30. So now we put the 1 here, put the 7 here, and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Okay, so now we've got our perfectly aligned <coughs> numbers for our clock face. And we don't need the line anymore. And we don't need the circle anymore. We just need all these guys to be a combined path. So that's what I'm going to do, combine them as a path. So now they're all a single path that you can load into the arc droid and cut. Cut it out of your saw blades or anything else and you've got your clock face. Um, 
I added an additional thing to it. Let's see. I added, of course, whoa, 6.8 liter logo. But other than that, oh, and you got to bridge the numbers. So I opened up the 8 on each end, opened up the 9, opened up the 0, opened up the 4. But that's a different, that's a different uh, example or a different demo. Um, I've done that before, but other than that, that's it. That's how you make a clock face. Let's go cut it out. Well, as you can see, while you're away, I got everything all set up. I got a blade loaded up up here, and I've got the drawing loaded. Um, in sheet cam, I use my settings for 16 gauge, but these are heavier than 16 gauge. They're somewhere between 16 gauge and 10 gauge, so um, 14 maybe, I don't know. So I, I adjusted the speed a little bit. I lowered it to 100 uh, inches per minute and I cranked up to 35 amps on the uh, plasma cutter. So that should accomp accomplish the cut that we need. And I've got it laid out. Um, so let's get it, uh, get it fired up and see what happens. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. Looks like a clock. Got a little 6.8 liter, you know, logo in there. Uh, but it's going to hang in my shop, so why not? Um, so the next thing I do is uh, load up some 16 gauge up here and cut out a little standoff and hanger. Uh, so let me get that material up here and we'll cut that out now. Okay, I didn't show the drawing, but, um, well, our laptop guy didn't show the drawing. He's a little lazy. Um, but what I, I have a standoff and hanger here so that it'll stand off the, the uh, depth of the mechanism that turns the hands. So that's 5 eighths of an inch. So I'll have to cut this out and bend it and we'll tack it on the back of the clock when I'm ready. But uh, here we go. Uh, let me go fire up the plasma. And... Set that to 30 amps. This is 16 gauge, 110 inches per minute. And let's cut it out. Okay, we've got our two pieces cut here. Here's the little, you know, it's like a picture frame mount. It's going to be a standoff because the mechanism for the clock is 5 eighths of an inch deep. So I'll bend these and that'll stand off and it'll hang from that. I think that'll work good and I don't have to worry about the head of a screw fitting that. And, and this is my cutout. Um, the, the pieces of metal that were retained, I literally went like that and they popped out. So settings are pretty good very little draws some well, I'm gonna knock that off then we got some welding to do well we'll bend this up and weld it on back obviously and the clock mechanism is a little bit um, the, the center of it's a little bit too small for that hole so I'm gonna tack this washer in there to make it fit better so that's that so let me get this cleaned up
All right, that cleaned up pretty good. I think that's gonna look good on the wall. So now to get this bent up and weld these two things on there and put together a clock. Okay, now I'm gonna weld that washer in, and believe it or not, that washer just fits perfectly, perfectly in there, and it'll be right side for the right size for the stud for the clock, and I'll get that uh, hanger tacked on or welded on as well, and we'll be done with that. So we'll be done with this part anyway. Okay, so literally take two. Um, I, was, I didn't hold that thing well. It didn't hold the uh, hanger tight enough against the blade, so it came up because the other side got hot. And when I welded it, I welded it. I missed a bit, you can see that. And then um, I welded it off the face and I want it flush to the face. So we'll try it again. Okay, so I put everything away and cleaned up a bit. And I actually, before I put away the angle grinder, I went ahead and ground down this washer in the back so the mechanism will sit more flush. And a little bit up here where the weld, backside of the welds were. So next step is I wanna put some paint on the 6.8 liter logo and then I'll put some lacquer on it. Okay, uh, it's out of the paint booth. Yeah, it's a hook in the in the backyard that I hang it on. But uh, put some red paint on the 6.8 liter. Put some lacquer on the rest of it. And now it's time to assemble it. So, I'll put this mechanism down there. We keep it square. Not that it matters. It's analog, right? It's like there's not a bad position or a wrong position. Speaking of analog, how many people you know, especially young people, can't even read an analog clock? I find them a good way to gauge how far I'm into the day, how much time's left in the day. And I'm gonna go get the right tool for the job. I should have brought one over. That's right, a pair of pliers is the right tool for this job. So the silver washer that I put on first didn't come with the clock mechanism kit. I just decided that we needed to have one, so I put one there. Make for a more stable base. And from what I can tell, the instructions just say shove these on, so our hand Minute hand. It 
seems kind of sketchy. Yeah, that minute hand doesn't want to stay on. Oh, it's bent. I bent it. Well, I can see that's a problem. There, it's holding its position. And the second hand goes on the center. And then all we need is a battery and we should be doing clock things there you go 6.8 liter garage clock shop clock whatever okay that wraps up another project in the 6.8 liter garage uh, took my two dollar saw blade and um, I actually did the math now, so 15 bucks for for uh, six mechanisms or clock mechanisms, so 250. So I uh, will say five bucks, five bucks worth of materials to make a new shop clock or put it wherever you want clock. Um, this one's going in the garage, um, but I'm pretty happy with that turned out. How that turned out turned out pretty good. Um, only thing left to do is hang it on the wall and we'll finish up this video with it hanging on the wall uh, if, if you got anything out of that enjoyed it at all uh, hit like and subscribe that re really helps out the channel and uh, give me a comment tell me what you would have done tell me what I did wrong uh, give me another idea for the next saw blade project um, I have an idea but I don't know if I'll be able to draw it out well enough but Anyway, uh, leave a comment. That always helps out the channel, and I enjoy reading them. I always try to respond to them. So, um, anyway, I uh, appreciate you watching, and uh, see you next time. There you go. Uh, 6.8 liter clock hanging on the wall of the 6.8 liter garage.